I'd be doing myself a disservice and every member of this band if I didn't perform the hell out of this. Guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more... Stay away. <laughs> if you're looking for more Stay Awake content, why not take a ganza over at the Stay Awake Patreon? On Patreon, you can find all of our episodes. Some of these will be less censored due to YouTube guidelines, as well as some additional monthly exclusive episodes and other exclusive content. You will also have early access to any future YouTube content. All of the videos on Patreon will remain online, so there is no need to worry about any potential removals. All of your patronage goes towards supporting the creation of future Stay Awake content. So take a gander if you'd so please. If not, well, that's okay too. For those of you who are already subscribed, Stay Awake thanks you immensely. Anyway, let's get on with the show. Oshawa, Ontario is a city located in southern Ontario, roughly 60 kilometers away from Toronto. It is known for producing over 180 NHL hockey players despite the lack of its own professional national hockey team, for its plethora of gorgeous green parks, as well as being one of the safest cities to live in Ontario to raise a family, mainly due to having the lowest crime rates out of any major city in the province. Unfortunately, even in some of the safest cities, it seems that some of the most horrible things still happen. Apparently the plumbing was all f up in that house. That aided in my capture and your capture. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, I was sitting down in my basement after the plumbers left and I was like, am I going to get out with this? I don't know. Should I leave now? How much longer before it was... This is Candice Fitzpatrick. Sometime during the spring of 2008, 19-year-old Candice Fitzpatrick went mysteriously missing. She was last seen by her friends and her family heading to a mall before she completely disappeared. Due to her itinerant lifestyle, her family did not immediately jump to any conclusions and hoped that they would hear from her again in a short while. After a lengthy amount of time had passed, the concern greatly escalated. Just under two years later, in 2010, the family of Candice Fitzpatrick reported Candice missing to the police. The police did an initial investigation into her disappearance, which did not seem to provide much information into her whereabouts or intent to up and leave. However, with minimal leads, the police investigation quickly came to a slow. Over the next several years, Candice's father, Bill Fitzpatrick, continued his search, hoping to one day reunite with his daughter. Almost 10 years later, Yet another disappearance of an 18-year-old female took place in Oshawa, Ontario. This is Rory Hache. On August 29, 2017, a then-pregnant Rory Hache was last seen walking down the street in Oshawa. When Rory did not respond to calls or texts, just two days later, on August 31st, Rory's guidance counselor, as well as Rory's family, reported her missing to the police. Another investigation ensued, as the family of Rory Hache eagerly awaited for more information about missing Rory. As the investigation continued over the next 10 days, no significant leads were discovered, until one day, there was a disturbing find. On September 11th, 2017, at about 8.30 p.m., a man and his 11-year-old grandson were out fishing in the Simcoe Street South and Harbour Road area of Oshawa, Ontario, when they found what they believed was a torso of a female. Uh, Post-mortem has been uh, issued for the uh, victim and hopefully at some point today we'll have some more details uh, as, as far as uh, cause of death and uh, I know that our homicide investigators are working on this case and uh, they're right now trying to identify the victim in this matter. An autopsy was performed and the cause of death was found as inconclusive. However, just four days after the discovery, on September 15th, Law enforcement publicly deemed the discovery as a homicide due to the state of the remains. Just under a month later, the torso was identified to belong to that of Rory Hache. Rory's grandmother then publicly thanked those involved in the search. I want to personally thank every person that reached out to help me in my efforts to bring her home safely. You really have restored my faith in humanity. 
I am devastated beyond human emotion, and I find myself enveloped in pure grief. As the investigation pressed on, with the hopes of discovering any further information regarding the murder of Rory Hache, another series of disturbing events began to unfold. Adam Strong. Adam Strong. Adam Strong. Adam Strong. This is Adam Jeffrey Strong. Adam Strong was living in a basement apartment located at 19 McMillan Drive in Oshawa, Ontario. Since Adam Strong was renting the basement apartment of a house, there was other residents that lived directly above him. Sometime mid to late December, the upstairs residents began dealing with plumbing issues in the house. After failed attempts at fixing things themselves, the residents decided to call in a professional to help remedy the issue. On December 29, 2017, a plumber by the name of Sean Fernandin arrived at the house. He spent a little over an hour trying to clear the blockage with absolutely no success. The plumber then decided to try and access the pipes directly, which could only be accessed through Adam Strong's basement apartment. After entering Adam's apartment, the plumber quickly noticed a putrid smell in the air. As he continued toward the pipes in Adam's bathroom, Adam became visibly anxious and began to pace back and forth. When he entered the bathroom, he discovered that Adam had removed the toilet and that the smell in the air was only getting stronger and stronger. After determining that the plumbing could not be fixed through this bathroom of the house, the plumber returned back upstairs to the main floor kitchen. He began to snake the drain, and eventually he came across what he believed may have been causing the blockage. He began to pull what he could from the drain. After working at pulling the blockage for about three to four hours, he made a disturbing find. The plumber immediately called his boss and explained that he believed that he was pulling a human flesh-like substance from the pipes. They then immediately contacted the police. Communications. Hi there, how are you? Good, you? Good, thanks. Um, just a, I'm a plumber and I'm on site for a, uh, a job. And we've got, uh, we're, we're snaking a drain and we were, uh, we've been pulling back, uh, we probably pulled back about 10 pounds, 15 pounds of like, it looks like flesh type of stuff, meat, and we started to snake, and we've been working at it for like three, four hours now, right? Oh, okay. And we, we can't get it clear, but we keep pulling back chunks of, you know, whatever the hell it is. The plumber and his boss decided to place everything that they had pulled from the pipes into a bag and await the arrival of the police before continuing any more work. An officer was quickly dispatched to the home and arrived around 8 p.m. The officer spoke with the plumbers regarding the condition and smell of the basement then observed the contents of the bag. Inside the bag was a human flesh-like substance. It weighed between 10 to 15 pounds and was over 14 inches in length. The officer immediately called for backup. When the other officers arrived in the scene, they discussed what they had found and decided to search the home. They chose to begin their search downstairs in Adam Strong's basement apartment. When they knocked on the door, Adam answered. When they asked him what he was flushing down the drain, Adam immediately replied, You got me. Adam Strong then went on to confess to officers that he had dismembered a human body and was attempting to dispose of the remains through the house plumbing. He then directed the officers to what was left of the body, which he was keeping in large garbage bags inside the freezer in his bedroom. The body parts that were found in the freezer had all of the flesh removed. A more in-depth investigation of the house ensued, and Adam Strong was immediately taken in for questioning. In addition to the contents of the freezer, police also discovered Rory's blood all throughout Adam's apartment, on the floors, on his bedroom walls, and on his bedroom ceiling. They found years worth of garbage piled all throughout the basement, several knives and other weapons, and what they thought was likely an explosive device kept inside a black bag. After clearing the nearby houses, a bomb squad accessed the apartment and performed a controlled explosion on what turned out to be a pipe bomb. During his interrogation, Adam went on to further admit to the disposal of Rory Hache's body in a disturbingly casual fashion. Though the interrogation was never released in its entirety, several key moments were released publicly. Let's now take a look at those moments. How you doing? Good, you? Meh. 
had better days. Do you see how upset I am? No. You're, you're pretty calm. Under uh, yeah. circumstances that uh, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm a little concerned how calm you are. There's no way you're getting around that I, that I chopped her up. There's no way. Okay. And I understand that. We weren't wondering if you chopped her up. Well, it's obvious know. that I did, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and uh, if, again, if not for... Apparently the plumbing was all f***ed up in that house. That aided in... My capture? And your capture. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, I was sitting down in my basement after the plumbers left, and I was like, am I going to get out with this? I don't know. Should I leave now? How much longer before it was? It was all done in one evening. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. But like, this was all one piece, and then this was all one piece. Up and I couldn't. Yeah. Really? I'm sorry, man. I don't remember. Really? Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't important to me, man. She's definitely deceased. Yes. Yes. And and you uh, clearly said, yeah, and I disposed of her. Yes. Yes. Tried to. But unfortunately, it was foiled by yep. inadequate plumbing. Yep. And that's a freaking shame. Yeah. Not for me. For me. Yeah, for you. Yeah. 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 You, you sound really selfish when you say that. All right. That's all right. Okay. What are you going to hand cream for? Uh, Wendy's triple. Yeah, that's doable. No pickles. Ice tea, no ice. Um, two, um, their value, um, spicy chicken wraps, and a grilled chicken Caesar salad. Okay. Is that is that outrageous? No, that's doable. I don't know how appropriate this is, but I'd like you to pass on to her mother and her father my condolences. During the months following Adam Strong's arrest, the investigation of his apartment continued, and DNA matching another individual was discovered. What was your reaction when you, uh, I, guess, I guess you got back this, uh, the DNA <coughs> results, to learn that a woman who was reported missing uh, well, eight years ago, last seen ten years ago, that her DNA is now found in this basement apartment. In relation to another woman who, you know, who you're looking, you're still trying to charge someone with murder. Yes, as an investigator, is obviously concerned due to the nature, of, due to the length of time she's been missing, the fact the DNA has been found in that house. We now have two, two female DNA profiles. One confirmed to be Rory, and, and the location of Rory in there, and now this unknown female DNA profile, and we are concerned about uh, the safety of Candace. After confirming that the DNA of the second individual came back to match that of Candice Fitzpatrick, who went missing 10 years earlier, Adam Strong was then charged with two counts of first-degree murder. Good afternoon. Two Oshawa teens were murdered by the same man, according to Durham Police. Body parts belonging to Rory Hache were found in Lake Ontario. DNA of Hache and missing Candace Fitzpatrick were found in an apartment. Adam Strong now facing two first-degree murder charges in connection with the deaths of the 18-year-olds. He was taken to Oshawa from the Central East Correctional Centre in Lindsay yesterday, but he did not appear in person. CTV's Austin Delaney joins us now live at the Oshawa courts where one of the victims, Austin's, one of the victims' mothers has been looking for answers. Now, Rory Hache's mother comes to all of Strong's appearances searching for answers. As you mentioned, he was brought to Oshawa Police Station yesterday from the Lindsay Jail. He spent the night there and he made his first court appearance via video link today. When Adam Strong's lawyer suggested they should talk about the new charge, he casually responded he didn't feel like it. I was up all night. I want to go to bed. It's been a rough day, he said. Rory Hache's mother gasped. Smug, just smug to the bitter, bitter core of his black heart, you know? Like, who hasn't had a bad night's sleep since they, People that don't even know my daughter that are involved in this case have had nothing but bad night's sleeps for 17 months, you know? Strong made his first court appearance today on a new charge in the first-degree murder of Candace Fitzpatrick, as well as Rory Hachet's. Fitzpatrick disappeared in 2008, her DNA found in Strong's home. Hachet's torso was found in Lake Ontario last summer. Hachet's mother says she just wants to know the details of what happened to her child. They're going to be horrible. They're going to be... I probably will, probably will not even bounce back from the details, but um, I'm her mother. I was in the hospital when this happened to Rory. I carry a lot of guilt not being here. The Fitzpatrick family was not in court today. 
Strong will be taken back to Lindsay Jail tonight. He will uh, and he will reappear in court on November the 30th. Reporting live from Oshawa, I'm Austin Delaney. Adam stuck to a plea of not guilty. During Adam's first court appearance, he maintained a constant smirk while being addressed by the court. He would laugh several times and constantly shake his head as if to disagree with the court. During his following appearances, he remained completely emotionless. He stuck to a downward gaze and showed little to no reaction when being directly addressed by the court. During his trial, five separate women testified against Adam. They stated that he would force them into a device which is operated with a pulley system, and then he would sexually assault them. The prosecution presented their theory that Adam Strong kidnapped both Candice and Rory. He then sexually assaulted them both and likely murdered them during the sexual assault. They also stated that they were unsure exactly how long Adam may have kept Candice and Rory captive before the murders. After the murders, the prosecution presented that they believe that Candice was more than likely buried. While Rory was dismembered, a large amount of her body was forced down the toilet drain, and her torso was tossed into the Oshawa Harbor on September 4th, 2017. They believe this happened on September 4th, due to Adam Strong's cell phone pinging off of cell phone towers near the Oshawa Harbor on that evening. The defense went on to claim that Adam Strong only admitted to the disposal of Rory's body and not to the murder. They painted Rory as a frequent drug user who likely overdosed on her own before Adam picked her up and began the disposal. The defense also claimed that despite the location of Candice's blood in Adam's apartment, that Adam played no part in her disappearance. In March of 2021, Adam Strong was found guilty of the first-degree murder of Rory Hache. However, due to the lack of physical evidence, he was only found guilty of manslaughter of Candice Fitzpatrick. On May 28, 2021, Adam Strong was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole for 25 years for the first-degree murder of Rory Hache, as well as another 18-year sentence to be served concurrently for the manslaughter of Candice Fitzpatrick. Rory Hache and Candace Fitzpatrick, two young women robbed of their futures by the same man. A judge calling their killer a dangerous predator who will never be seen in public again. A warning about the disturbing details in this case. CTV's Mike Walker is live outside the courthouse in Oshawa with more. And Mike, Adam Strong has now been sentenced. That's right, Nathan. It was another emotional day here at the Oshawa Courthouse. There was cheering in the courtroom from families and friends of both victims as the judge sentenced Adam Strong to life in prison. The families and friends of Rory Hache and Candace Fitzpatrick can now close a dark chapter in their lives. I'm happy. I'm overjoyed. I'm elated. Bill Fitzpatrick reacting outside the courthouse after a judge sentenced 48-year-old Adam Strong to life in prison for the first-degree murder of 18-year-old Rory Hache and 18 years concurrently for the manslaughter and the death of his 19-year-old daughter, Candace Fitzpatrick. This, guy, this guy's going away. He's never going to get out. He'll never harm another girl in this world. First-degree murder carries an automatic life sentence. It was up to Justice Joseph DeLuca to decide the sentence for manslaughter. In his sentencing, Justice DeLuca said, the sentence I impose today can never undo the harm that Adam Strong has caused. It can never erase the horrors that the family of the victims have endured. It can never change the final moments of Ms. Hache's and Ms. Fitzpatrick's life, and it cannot bring them back. And that the sentence I impose will likely ensure he will never get out of prison. <laughs> 